to this computer. Says it's going. Uh, all right. Well, it's your channel, Will. Do you want to introduce us? <laughs> Hi, I'm Will. Um, today we have a special treat and we have some special guest stars. We're recording on a Zoom call and we're going to get a special demo for something very interesting. I think it's interesting. The blast from the past from the 1980s, 1986, a good year. That's when Aliens came out. Okay, so I'll let everyone introduce themselves. I'm Will. I guess this is my YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're not here on Zoom. Um, and I just, I'm interested in old, weird, uh, useless computer stuff that should be resurrected and revisited. Uh, I'm Michael. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Northeastern these days, but uh, this isn't really related to my research at all. It's just uh, stuff that I find cool, looking back at sort of the the lineage of people thinking about uh, how we can better communicate with computers. So. Okay, and uh, I'm a Maciek, but I usually go under the name Panic on the internet, uh, and I work as a programmer, but in, in my spare time, I develop a grasp uh, structure editor for, for the scheme programming language. And this is actually uh, how I met Michael. I, I was demoing it at uh, scheme workshops this year. Uh, and yeah, and, and, and then we chatted a bit and uh, Michael uh, mentioned some resemblances to the boxer environment. All right. So, um, I guess I guess before we start the demo, maybe a little bit of uh, I don't know historical context about what Boxer was about would be would be useful. Um, so the 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 long line of work that it sits in the middle of, in in my view, is um, you know people trying to come up with with computing environments that. We're not made for like automating a task, uh, but we're made for communicating and, and thinking in. Uh, and sort of early systems are like Doug Engelbart's NLS, and then Smalltalk was very famous personal dynamic media uh, in the in the seventies, uh, following that idea. And uh, Boxer was sort of I think inspired by by um, Smalltalk and that you know that line of work. Also, Seymour Papert's. Um, ideas, uh, mindstorms, and logo. Uh, and so Boxer was sort of another attempt to build a system like that. And sort of the ideal would be that it would be, um, it would eventually have the same impact on the world, not Boxer specifically, but computation, computational media would have the same impact on the world that like the invention of writing has had on the world um, in terms of changing uh, both how we sort of create things like books um, but also how we sort of communicate and think on a very day-to-day -day basis, how we write our to-do lists, things things of that scale. Um, and so they wanted to create a medium that would sort of have that same sort of range of scale from from day-to-day -day use by sort of just normal people, uh, scaling up to sort of you know creating uh, creating more sophisticated forms of sort of computational writing. Um, so yeah, that was that was the goal. Uh, let me open it up. So I'm running a version of Boxer that's more recent than the 80s. So Boxer was, was made in the 80s. There's a, a nice paper called Boxer, a Reconstructable Computational Medium uh, from 1986, I just found. Uh, but this is a somewhat more recent version. They've tried to keep it alive in various ways. This, I guess, is from 2003 to 2006, Windows version. Um, but I think all the concepts are about the same. So, um, yeah, this is what you see when you open it up. It's, um, it's sort of both a mixture of a, of a document system and a programming environment. So at first we're just sort of looking at a document system really, and it's sort of hierarchical. It's all structured by hierarchical boxes. Uh, and so we can just sort of start navigating 
some of the um, you know some of the documentation about it, some of the demos about it. Um, so there's one in particular that I want to look at. So so you can see these ideas. They talk about math micro worlds and physics micro worlds. So this is the idea of a micro world. I think was originally in Mindstorms. I could be wrong. Um, Definitely in Mindstorms and in the creator of Boxer, uh, Andrea de Sessa, has a nice book called Changing Minds. But um, it's basically about the idea that, that simulation of math or physics would be a way that, that people could sort of directly interact with, with mathematical objects in a way that, um, you know, you sort of can't just writing on paper, but with simulation you can get them to react to you in interesting ways. And that that was, uh, they thought, an essential sort of feature of what computation would be would do to the way that we 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 thought. Um, so this is an example. Uh, somebody taught a class on, uh, I guess, fractals and infinity uh, to some students. I guess at a high school, and this was sort of. Um, uh, a bunch of the content from the class and examples uh, of things that people built. Um, I'm just going to look at one little example of this, uh, which is building tree-like things with fractals. So let me... Oh, oh, just open my laptop here. I hope that doesn't screw things up. Um, did we... Still screen sharing okay? Uh, yep. I have to have my control and alt keys because it's got a kind of funky old school interface. And if I want to uh, zoom up this box, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to alt click on the box and that's going to make it sort of take my entire screen. Or I can control click to sort of zoom it down. Um, uh, all right, so, okay. So I'm really wanting to go specifically into this fractal trees box. Um, and take a look at, at this program. Oh, I made it smaller. I need to make it bigger <laughs> and bigger again. All right, there we go. Um, so Boxer has embedded in it this sort of logo-like drawing environment. So it's got, it's got turtle graphics. That's what this box here is. And the triangle is the turtle. And uh, if I, uh, yeah. So, so what overall this program is gonna do is it's going to draw a little tree like that. Um, and if I sort of, I can tweak tweak some commands and it'll draw a slightly different tree. Um, so I guess a few interesting things already are going on. So this sort of, um, the structure of this program uh, is set up sort of via nested boxes in this fractal tree box. So we have um, tree one, which is going to be sort of the recursive drawing procedure. That's the, the main procedure that's going to draw it. And we've got setup. And uh, you can sort of see the lines of code of, of setup here. You know, it's just, just a box with sequential lines of code. And um, sort of a, an idea that uh, the Boxer folks thought was really important was that uh, everything be sort of they, they call it um, naive realism, like every piece of program state is there and accessible. And also any line of code that can possibly do something, you can just immediately run like any line of code in isolation to see what happens. So if I want to, I can just sort of click through this setup procedure just by double clicking each line and it will execute that line of code. Uh, so we can sort of see what the setup procedure does. So if I double click CS, I'm guessing that that means clear screen. And it's going to clear it. Uh, I'm going to pen up back 75 so it can see the turtle moves back and pen down. So it looks like the job of uh, setup was to get us sort of into that starting position for the, the tree brute. Is there more? Oh, is, I see. Okay, at the bottom is a do it button. So that's like the. Uh... Like in a modern small talk environment, you have do it. No, so the do the it thing, there or? is telling us the kind of box that it is. And that hasn't mattered for the interaction that we've done so far of just double clicking lines on it. That would happen the same if it was a data box. Um, but whereas do it is, if, if we make a box a do it box, 
then that basically binds the label of the box, so the name setup, as a procedure. So because this is a do it box, when I execute this line of code in the menu box, um, it's going to treat the reference to setup as a procedure call. Okay. So can you can you somehow click on the setup box and execute all the code in setup also without double clicking on each line? Uh, execute the. Mm, I don't know. Can I? Like so, clicking um, do it doesn't do anything. Uh, I'm not sure that it does. No. Okay. There may be a way that I'm just not experienced with Boxer enough to do. I'm Control about as experienced as with Boxer as I need to do yeah. to do this demo. I don't actually have deep experience, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Um. And I also have a question. So, would it be possible to, when you have this, where you have this menu box, mm -hmm. could you uh, move the call to the tree procedure to another line, and would it still work? The I same? think so. The only consequence of that would be that to to do the entire drawing, I would have to double click on both lines, right? Because okay. one would set up and the other would draw. So that was double click on tree, but now if I want to. If I just double click that again, it would sort of not reset and I have to double click on setup as well. So I think that's why they put it all in one line so that it executes both in a single double click. Okay, and I noticed that tree one has boxes inside of it. Yes, so let's 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 look into tree one. Um I'll I'll get to that in a moment. Um so I think the first interesting thing is, OK, I want to start stepping through tree one, right? I've said that, that I should be able to double click on any line of code and see what it does, right? Tree one's a little interesting because it's a procedure with parameters, right? It has T, B, and A, right? So how's that going to work? How can I sort of debug it? So I'm going to try just double clicking on input T, B, A. And it says, OK, well, if you want to sort of debug this box, I'll give you some fields, and you can put in some example parameters. Uh, and then we can sort of continue uh, proceeding with the lines inside. So I sort of had to manually fill in those parameters because it doesn't know what example call I'm wanting to debug. But that, that was sort of the starting point. So now I can sort of double click um, along these lines. And here's, we can see it's doing a recursive call doing one of those branches. And yeah, as you as you said, there are these um, nested do it boxes inside, and uh, basically using do it boxes as as parenthesized expressions. Um, so sort of boxes are, are are used in in quite a wide variety of of ways. Um, for data variables, the data boxes are used that way. So we can see here we have you know when I double click on input. It turned it into input with these three boxes, T, B, and A, and they're, they're labeled. And the consequence of them being labeled means that those names are in scope as variable references um, in, the, in any box contained in the box that contains the T, B, and A variables. Um, so that's sort of how the scope works. It's by sort of box containment, I guess. Um, in shadow names? I believe so, but I haven't experimented. We could we could find out fairly quickly. Yes, uh, we could. So if we wanted to find out, uh, I will make a data box. I will call it shadowing. I will make a um, make a data box with five. Call it X. I will make another. This is basically going to be a do it box, but I don't have to call it that. And I think if I double click on X, it will evaluate to five. Uh, paste that result in. So that's one context. And now let's make a nested box. Uh, another data box. And I'll call this one nested. And in here, we will have another data box labeled X, where X is 6. And we will have another place where we're going to evaluate a reference to X. And here we get 6. Very nice. We will see some dynamic scope later, though, so don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, all right. So uh, we've seen sort of the uses of, of data boxes, do it boxes, this idea of sort of pokeability of, uh, of naive realism. Also, the idea that every piece of data in the system should be sort of realized as something that fits into this spatial metaphor. You can't have a variable that has a value in Boxer without having a box somewhere in the system that contains the value of that variable. Um, so those were sort of the ideas that were, that were meant to make this uh, somewhat accessible. Um, so can, can a uh, procedure return a box? Like are boxes first class objects? Yep, yep, they are. I don't know how to do that, so I won't try and demo it, but uh, <laughs> yes. Um, all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this sort of back where we found it to do the next little piece of this. Um, so the next piece that I wanna I wanna play with is the sort of um, reconstructability or remixing idea. So so you know their tagline for Boxer is that it's a reconstructable computational medium. Oh, did I lose? Uh, am I blurry now? I think I'm blurry now on video. Uh, let me try and fix that. My camera just, I think that's better now. Anyway. Um, so, so a reconstructable computational medium, the concept they're getting at there is that if I give you a book or a, another piece of writing, right, and it has pictures in it, you will definitely be able to quote that book, right? There's no, no possibility that you won't be able to type in the same characters on your computer or, uh, you know, Xerox the photos or whatever. Right. Uh, whereas if I give you a computer program, it's uh, not at all a sure thing that you will be able to quote a fragment of that computer program and remix it with some other computer program into your own derived work. Um, so they want a medium in which in which that is true. Um, and so I want to, to show an example of sort of doing that with this particular program. Um, Right now, uh, this program, you know, I don't know. I think it's kind of fun to, to play around with drawing the trees at uh, sort of with different angles. Um, but it's a little disappointing that I have to jump in here and, and type the angle and double click it to, to rerun it all the time. So I want to see if I can sort of take this program and combine it together with some other piece of UI that will let me sort of live modify this number. Um, you know, sort of the, the Brett Victor style. Uh, so that's what I want to do next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to grab this box and I'm going to copy it. Control C. So that's another thing that you can do with everything Boxer. It's all copy and pasteable. And then I'm going to drop down the places menu and I'm going to go to the top level. Uh, this is sort of my box, my, my demo environment. I'm, I'm going to paste that in there. And then I'm going to start going to try and find like some UI element component that I can use to, to sort of live edit this, this number that I want to tweak. When uh, you copy and paste a box like this, is there a guarantee that all the dependencies are copied with it? Or is there some way, you know, might there be like a hanging reference to some other procedure or something like that. Is, does the, the nested box scope ensure that it's always complete when you copy a box? Yeah, I have not experimented enough. I suspect that the answer is, is that it is not uh, as nice as you would want it to be there. Um, because if I had, generally what's going to happen is that I'm going to sort of, you know, in this example, I'm going to have all the code that I need sort of uh, that's not primitive, that's sort of, included inside the box somewhere, right? And when I copy it, I'll get all of that code. But any that I might have been depending on in an environment from outside, I am going to sort of lose references to. Uh, and this is this is one of the things that I think is sort of, yeah, sort of a problem. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get more into what I think are, are problems later, but uh, that's that's one of them for sure. Um, so I'm going to go, go dig through their sort of demos for... Uh, a piece of UI that I can use um, to sort of live update that.
that value. Uh, loading the toolbox is very slow today. So in interface objects, they have a slider. So here's, here's an example of the slider, slider object. And they have a little, little demo of it, what it can do. So it's adjusting the size of that sprite. And it has a very fancy little feature where if I click and hold and drag and drop on another box, then it redirects what the slider modifies. So now we can see it's not changing the size of the sprite, but it is changing the value in this X field as I move the slider. Can um, you drag it on multiple boxes? Not at the same time. It'll only be controlling one box at a time. Is there like a splitter box or multiplexer box where you can mm. have box control multiple boxes? Um, I don't think so. Definitely not. Um, all right. So the other thing I want to say, though, is this, this thing isn't a primitive, right? It, it looks like it might be a primitive, right? Um, but this slider is not a primitive in the system. It's something, uh, you know, this slider UI is actually implemented with the turtle graphics, right? Uh, the, the drag, the drag slider dragger here, right, is like a sprite in turtle graphics. Um, and so we can actually look inside this box and see how it's implemented. So any sort of graphics box, that's what anything like this where it has a, a box top that is drawn using turtle graphics. So any graphics box, I can, at this bottom left, there's a flip to text option. So if I click that, hold it long enough, let go, it'll show us uh, sort of the, the code and data underneath that implements that. Um, and here we're only seeing part of it. We're only seeing right now uh, the parts that let me configure what the slider does. So there's sort of, I can choose what the minimum value for the slider is, the maximum value, so it'll go from one to nine. These actions are, I can put a little piece of code, uh, program text into the action or end action fields, and it'll run that after sort of the number it has adjusted. And then there's also this value box. And something interesting is going on with the value box. So remember that we're modifying the X field, right? Uh, with the slider. And pay attention to what happens to that value box when I go change the value of x. The value in the value box changes as well, and it's drawn a little bit differently. So this is, um, I think, I think they're called ports. Uh, so the the value in the value box is a port to another box, port to the the box that is being modified. Um, it's sort of a UI equivalent of a you know a, a reference in in a programming language. Um, so that's how they're sort of setting up the, the connection between those things. So this is all the configuration, but we haven't yet seen anything about how this slider is actually implemented, right? It still looks primitive as far as we can tell so far. Um, but it turns out that if we drop down other and say open closet, shows us a bunch of stuff that was hidden before. And so we have a box that sort of handles a mouse click on sprite event. We have a mouse click on graphics event handler. And then we have sprites for the, the drag bar uh, and for the, the thing that we were able to drag to. This one's a little, little funkier, so I won't try and explain that one. Um, but we have was the sprite there, object for the drag bar. Sorry, was there any visual indication that there was a cl closed closet here? No, there was not any visual indication. Okay. We just had to guess to go looking for it. Um, yeah. Is there any way to say, ex keep expanding, show me everything? I will guess there is, but I don't know it. Okay. Um, I mean, I can, I can expand any of these individual things, but... Um, I don't know how to sort of recursively expand everything. In general, that would be a bad idea because this, you know, everything that we've seen so far is in sure. one big nested box document. So yeah. that would be a, quite a lot to expand. Um, anyway, so, so that's, this is how they can sort of build 
build sort of a reusable component. It's not reusable in the sense that there's one implementation that we have many instances of, but it's reusable in the sense that the implementation is is hidden and only the, the pieces that we want to change are, are not uh, in this closet part. Um, so I'm going to grab a copy of this uh, slider. Um, and I'm going to go back to the top level. And I'm going to drop it inside my fractal trees example. Um, zoom up into the fractal trees. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make the slider uh, manipulate the value that I pass in here. And to do that, I'm going to have to have a box representing that value. So I'm going to create a, uh, a data box called angle. And I don't know, for now it'll be 10. And in the code, I'm going to refer to the angle data box. This is a port, or is this just a variable just, reference? Just a variable reference. OK, what's the difference between this and a port? So variable reference is by textual name, and it's resolved in the surrounding scope, uh, whereas a port is more like, I don't know, it's more like a symbolic link or something where there's an actual object representing the reference. OK. Another box representing the reference. And it could refer to something that is not visible in the current lexical scope or not, you know, in that parent chain at all, right? It could be something sort of that's a sibling far away in, in the environment. So I'm going to try using the, the redirect option here. So it looks like now it does manipulate the angle. And then I'm going to open up the configuration again and say that I think the max value that makes sense here is about 180 for number of degrees. Um, yeah, let's give that a try. Let's give that a try. So now I can, I can tweak this. And right now, I still have to then manually sort of rerun. Uh, but I've, I've somewhat integrated these pieces. What I would really like, though, is I would really like it when I, when I finish dragging this, this thing for it to just rerun immediately. right? Um, so the way I'm going to try and do that is I'm going to try and use the end action option here. Uh, oh. Yep. And I'm going to say draw, and I'm going to rename this menu to draw, make it a procedure, and I'm going to change it from a data box that w doesn't act as a procedure to a do it box that does act as a procedure. So now, uh, yeah, now this, this draw as the end action should cause it to redraw uh, when, I, when I finish. So let's see if that works. So that did not work, right? Didn't appear to work. And the the graphics of my 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 box here looks very messed looks up. It's a little right? messed up now. And it keeps snapping back to the center again after you move it. Yeah. So what's what's going on, do we think, here? I think we've changed the execution context of draw. Yes. Exactly. Dynamic scope. So so we are drawing, but we are drawing not uh, not on the the tree place where we wanted to, but we're drawing the tree on the slider instead, on the slider box instead. Um, so, yeah, that's exactly the problem. So what we need to do is, or at least one solution to this that I am aware of, is that we can create a port and a port with a reference to the draw function. And it turns out that when you execute code through a port, it executes in the context of, of where the box that you're creating the port to was defined, uh, instead of the context of where you called from. So that's, okay, that's going to be That's starting to get a little weird to me. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not a boxer expert. I don't know if this is like the standard accepted solution. Uh, I, I can't remember where I came up with the solution. It may have just been, hmm, I wonder if I try doing this, does it work? And it seems to work. So uh, I'm not going to advertise that this is, uh, this is good boxer programming. Uh, but yeah, now my slider seems to work the way I want it to work. So that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Okay, so the problem. All right, let me let me try to understand this. So before you added the slider, because the box, the turtle box, the drawing canvas was inside the same fractal trees box as the draw procedure and set up and all that, the drawing happened. Like, like what was connecting draw to that turtle canvas? And can you have more than one turtle canvas in the same box? And like, how would that work then? Like, can you add a second turtle? Yeah. So the same scope as the current curl turtle canvas. Uh, we could try that in a minute. It's not clear to me how these things are connected. Uh, um, you yeah. Know, so, so magic. draw was correctly resolving to the, the function that we wanted it to resolve to, I think. Right. Yeah. But then all these functions like setup and CS and pen up, right. They were, uh, they were acting on my understanding of it is they were acting on the drawing context that was most immediately surrounding them. Right. And in this context of the action box or the end action box here, the mm. drawing context that is Im most immediately surrounding is the drawing context for the graphics on the top of that box. So, so immediately surrounding sounds a little strange to me because it looks like the canvas is at the same in the same scope or same level as the drawing code. So it's not about the drawing code. It's about where the drawing code got executed, where the call to the drawing code was. Okay, so the so call... the call to the drawing code was in this end action box, right? Sure, but I'm not. I'm not talking about the slider. I'm just talking about originally. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, without the yeah. slider, I don't understand how the part without the slider works. The fact that it's a sibling, yeah. Yeah. So somehow it's like is draw communicating something to fractal trees, and then fractal trees is telling all the canvases within it. Or is there some invisible connection between draw and setup and all that? You know, like, you know, is it sort of like uh, how you had to draw? I mean, how you had to drag from the slider to the canvas? Did, did well, someone? Let's, let's see what happens if we put two, two drawing contexts in here. Okay. <clears throat> I guess it happens to the first one. <laughs> okay. And, and can you, can you swap them? Can you like, I mean, do they have... Can you give them names or something? Like, can you actually tell them apart? Uh, let's see or is it only it by position name. somehow? Like, so so even though there's a hierarchical boxing, there's also a ordering within the boxing from the yeah. upper left. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, I think so all I can you... do is I can I can cut and I can paste it over to in front of it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. and now it seems to operate on that one. Okay, so it's it's like literally finding the first <clears throat> numbered from upper left. Seems to be canvas. I see. And there may be a way a way to label them and to direct these operations to labeled graphics okay. boxes. I'm not sure, but all right. All right. So the last little thing that I wanted to show is, well, okay, so we've we've taken pieces and we've sort of mixed them up, but now we can turn turn this overall thing into sort of another component that hides away its behavior uh, by putting all of the implementation into the closet. And now if I close the closet, I sort of step back out of this thing. We have just sort of, um, yeah, sort of just a nicely put together demo where you can't see how it works until you dig into oh. it. 
So I think that's the that's the end of the the boxer the good parts demo that I have. Um, <laughs> uh, as far as uh, I guess there's some things that that I think I want to say about you know what I think is is missing here, right? I mean, this is one of these uh, just like just like small talk systems. It's all it's all very imperative, right? It's all very uh, old school programming languages, not uh, not functional programming. Um, and another sort of big problem to me is there's like no there's no way to have an abstraction and instantiations of that abstraction. So I can't like make a copy of this fractal trees thing, or I can I can make a copy, but there's no way then if oh I discover that I have a bug in that thing that I can go modify one piece of code and have it sort of fix fix it in all of them. Right, because when I copied it, I copied deeply the entire implementation of it. Right. Um, so, so I would be very interested, and this is yeah, this is part of why I wanted to give this demo to you is I would be very interested in in somebody in the context of a sort of you know relatively modern functional programming language to say, well, how can we how can we take all these ideas but reconcile them with with functional programming, reconcile them with wanting to to be able to create abstractions, um, that kind of thing. It, this reminds me a lot of HyperCard, actually. I, I looked it up. So HyperCard came out, I think, a year after this one. Hmm. But it, it it's a lot of it feels like programming in HyperCard. Yeah. You know? So I, I wonder if this had any influence on HyperCard, or if there's yeah. A I mean, you've definitely got or... that that same you know on HyperCard. There's lots of you've got the events that traverse sort of the the hierarchy tree of what's on a card. Yeah, I think uh, that's pretty similar to here. Everything is very spatial. Okay, so so as far as the cloning. You know, so so they're they're object oriented languages like self or like the original model for JavaScript where you would clone objects instead of doing inheritance and class yeah hierarchy type things, right? Do you think this is more like like that or is it even deeper level of cloning somehow? I mean, this isn't like a prototypical inheritance or anything. I, as far as I understand, you're just you're just copying the entire. You're just like literally cop. It's like you're copying all the code. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Copy and paste abstraction, as Kent calls it. Yep. And then, sort of another problem, just from an implementation perspective, is like if you were to build a real system doing this, you would want to be able to to build things by directly composing in this way, right? But then for actually executing my final fractal trees demo, right, I don't want there to be all this reflective overhead of, you know, there being these reified box structures and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking up in environments to go, you know, dynamically resolve this method call, right? I want sort of once I've built the thing and I'm not modifying it, I want it to sort of all get inlined together into some, some fast component, right? Um, so, so could you do this with prototypical inheritance? Like if you said, okay, this is a cool idea, but uh, it's lacking abstraction. Could you do something like this? And, I think you know, that's basically what Jonathan Edwards was trying to do with something with managed copy and paste, right? Mm -hmm. Is okay. to say that, okay, we can grab a thing, we can copy it, we can paste it. And then when we start modifying the new thing, um, uh, also reminds me of just copy on write file systems or something, but but initially it's it's a pro you know it's a based on a prototype of this other thing, and as I modify modify my other instance, um, it's becoming more and more distinct. But we were sort of keeping track of of what is from the original and and what is what is distinct. So at least my understanding of his managed copy and paste is is something like prototypical inheritance, but with a, a UI that you can understand for it. And could you also maybe think about this in terms of view update problem? Yeah, I mean, a view update problem is more 
we have some transformation on data, some function that the data is going through. We want to edit the view and, and have that edit the original data. And I'm not, it doesn't seem the same here because at least what we were talking about was sort of editing the actual code that implements the behavior. And that's not, it's not produced as a function of something else, right? But it may be that if you tried to, so, okay, so a place where a view update problem might occur is I was sort of complaining that this was so imperative, right? Mm -hmm. um, but a feature of it being imperative is that it supports this idea of naive realism that everything that can exist is there on the screen and also is not something that's locked down, but that you can edit, right? Any data box that is here is something that anybody can go in and edit, right? Yeah. Um, but if you have functional programming, then you probably don't want the sort of outputs of a function, the derived data, to be something that you just go in and edit, right? Because then you've lost the functional correspondence between the input and the output. So you could imagine saying, okay, well, let's try and allow people to edit the outputs and then sort of do a view update problem of inputs. Sometimes that might make sense. Or you might also just say, okay, well, the outputs are fixed, but it's very easy to copy an output that is derived data into a new cell that represents that, okay, now I'm keeping track of this as state. Now I'm considering this sort of uh, real data that isn't derived from something else. I think that's maybe a UI problem of how you represent that idea. But... Well, if you want to be able to edit outputs, I know a programming paradigm that would let you do that. <laughs> Yes, for sure. I wonder what a relational version of this would feel like. Well, I would, would be very fun to see you create one. That's pretty inspiring. Yeah, I mean, it also reminded me of this sketch and sketch system developed by Ravika. Mm -hmm. I mean, your ideas reminded me of that. Yeah, than... yeah, the view update yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so, because I know that there is an ongoing uh, boxer reconstruction project or, or something like this, because I, I see that you're showing us uh, a, a, a version running inside of a Windows virtual machine, mm -hmm. but I think that they're, they are natively developed for, for OS X. Yeah, I tried downloading that one. It just didn't have, uh, it doesn't seem like they've ported all of these sort of uh, demo files that I was was stealing from for this this demonstration, but uh, okay. So so they are not binary compatible with each other. I I I guess I don't know whether I could have tried to copy the boxes from this system and and load them in in the the, the native Mac one. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I I have that one installed too. So if we want to, we can poke <laughs> around on it. But <laughs> actually, that'd be kind of interesting. All right. Oh, uh, did, did I install it on this computer or did I install oh, it okay. on my other computer? Well, you could always join from your other computer and have two of you. We could copy That's... you just like a boxer. <laughs> You're already in a box. You're in a rectangle on my screen. Uh, it is on my other computer, so uh, I okay. don't think it'll be easy to get to. Oh, OK. <sighs> Um, from what I could right. tell, it you know it was it was re-implementing in a modern way everything, but um, the system seemed seemed very much the same otherwise. So, all right, so still the same effects and still the same underlying model. Yeah, I mean, it's drawn with OpenGL now, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's like the same old seventy, I mean eighties technology that runs on your current machine. As far as I could tell, yeah. Okay. Uh, and well, what I would really love is. I'll somebody to implement oh. something inspired by this, not not yeah. a resurrection of it, but something inspired by this that runs on the web is what I would really Oh, like. on the web, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe a good project for the Sprightly Institute. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I got Hoot Guile now. And Wasm. Oh, yeah, that's true. That, that, that would be a... Uh... Well, you would need you would need the eval capability that they're still working on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So one, once you have that, hopefully get fun. that soon, and then I can imagine something like this being done in Hukai. Yeah.
have your your data boxes have nice lines of scheme code instead. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, one thing that is mildly of putting in the system is that it uh, it has no scalable graphics. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, again, it was a it was a system that was made in the eighties. So, <laughs> yes, right. do you mean like sprites versus things that are resolution independent? Yeah, something? yeah, something uh -huh. that you could you could yeah. like rotate it and and actually this tree rendering this it, it felt fairly slow. Was it because of some uh, uh, some delays that were introduced to the system, or was it just working like this? I think it was just working like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so if I remember correctly, didn't Hal Abelson also have something to do with this? Project? Yeah, Hal Abelson, I think, was Andrea DeSessa's advisor. Yeah, uh, because you know Hal Abelson also worked on a logo system. I, was it Star Logo? Hmm. Um, and I think that was maybe around the same time, maybe slightly. I, I don't, I don't remember the exact time, but uh, in in Star Logo. Uh, it, it was like this massively multi-turtle logo where oh, you could okay. draw a circle by taking the, 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 the turtle and then having it, you know, um, rotate a random angle and then move forward one. And then when you have a middle, million turtles, it draws a circle. <laughs> like that. So it reminds me a little bit of uh, the star logo also. It's all turtles all the way down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, <laughs> but by the way, can you can you see is, is there some way to get to this turtle that draws these boxes in the get system? To the turtle that draws the boxes. Uh turtle like, a box or or you mean is there a code that configures the turtle or yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, because I, I figure that using turtle geometry for drawing a box is is not very complicated. So I wonder if that is itself somehow implemented in Boxer. My guess is that's primitive, as far as I can tell. The that that's primitive. Um, the whole thing is implemented on top of, I think, on top of a, some version of Common Lisp. Uh, mm -hmm. At least the modern mm -hmm. versions are. But. Okay. So it's probably Common Lisp code underneath. But I've never been able to to pull apart a graphics box and access the sprite object or something. Do you know if this was originally done on a list machine? I do not. I think so. I mean, I think that I saw some demo and, and maybe they were using genera or, or something mm -hmm. like this. Well, have we have we convinced you to 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 turn grasp into a boxer? Well, <laughs> um, I mean I'm sort of, I, I personally don't feel at all attached to, to the idea of, of using turtle geometry. I mean... Oh, the, yeah, yeah. That's not the part that I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> think yeah, is I mean, worthy of attachment. So, but because I, I think that we, we think in a similar way, in the sense that it would be really nice to uh, compose objects from, from other objects. Like, for example, the thing that I was thinking about, where you, you had this uh, slider and it was horizontal. So... Why, why not have a combinator that turns it, it into a vertical uh, mm. slider just easily? And it would translate uh, all, all the mouse inputs uh, yeah. appropriately to to make it behave. Yeah, I mean, things that things that I love about the system are having having the the direct construction of, of UI elements intermixed in the same sort of environment where I I also define textual code that implements some behavior of those mm -hmm. those UI elements and having that sort of be resolved in this spatial way. I really like that feature of Boxer where, you know, the um I'm 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 when I'm sort of resolving a method reference, I'm resolving it in in some way in spatial connection to the mm -hmm. the document. Um, and also it wasn't clear to me why there are these two different types of boxes why do you need data boxes and do it boxes i think it's about the semantics of what happens when i refer to one of those names from program text mm -hmm. so if it's a data box it produces the value the 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 textual contents of that box right mm -hmm. 
And if it's a do it, then it says evaluate the do it box and give me the procedure that it represents. Okay, so, so it is so that we only have, so it is made in order to simplify references. It seems to right. be, seems to be okay. as far as I can tell. So if you had self-evaluating literals, if all your literals self-evaluated, you might not need to make the distinction. Is it more like an optimization then at that point? Or is there something that'd be semantically different? Uh, well, I mean, right now we're also using data. Uh, data boxes are just like places that you can write text, right? Sure. But you, that... you just had like like in schemes, strings are self-evaluating, right? So a string, yeah. of, a string of text evaluates a string of text. So you could evaluate just fine in right. some sense. And but but, say, okay, but that's, that's in a quote, a right? You're having to put that in a quote. I don't know if you want, sure. uh, you know, data boxes are used just for creating UI elements or creating documentation oh, text. Is, so it's data, is data, uh, is a data box just quote? Maybe data box is a quote. Maybe that's the way to think of it. That that could plausibly because work. Because in a do it box, if you write a word, then that's going to be treated as a variable reference. Uh, certainly, when you certainly when you um, reference it and evaluate it as a procedure, yeah, yeah. So, so data boxes give you a way to quote things. It's a yeah. type of quote, I guess. That would definitely be a way to think about it. So, we need a quasi data box. <laughs> I mean, yeah, what, what, box. Yeah, one one integration with with programming that I've really wanted is I would really love to be able to. You know, write functional code that composes a UI, but when I, you know, a little bit like uh, writing React code that uses JSX, right? But instead mm -hmm. of having a JSX expression there for some piece that I want to 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 put into my UI, I would like to have a quote there, and then a box which is actually contains like real manipulable UI, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, real graphical elements. And it's just a quoted UI, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I sort of evaluate that uh, as part of my program that's composing a bigger UI, it sort of produces an instance or a copy in some sense, maybe that prototypical inheritance of that that quoted UI. Um, that would be one kind of cool combination I could imagine. So I think, I think there's definitely something in there about boxes and quote. <laughs> And so do you think it would be possible to write a function that takes two boxes that contain boxes and returns sort of appended version of it? In Boxer today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sure that's possible. Because, you know, boxes are also the data model. So if I want to represent a list in Boxer, right, mm -hmm. what I do is I create a box that contains a sequence of, a, of nested boxes, right? Okay. So that's a place where that order that we saw that mattered also in resolving the graphics box, right? It also matters because I represent lists by creating boxes with, with ordered boxes inside. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, so it probably should also be possible to implement a scheme evaluator of, by making scheme expressions of, as, as nested boxes. Yeah, yeah, that, that seems very true. You should be able to write write an interpreter that would, uh, yeah. Uh, the, writing the interpreter the first time might not be very pleasant, I think. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I want turtle a turtle fan. When you were drawing those trees with the turtles, I was like, oh, we could do the search tree for mini Canron. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like how efficient that'd be. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm about out of thoughts. Any any last ones before we call it? I think it's very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I also because I, I I personally tried using Boxer, uh, just this this version that I downloaded, and and it was very hard. I mean, I did find one tutorial, I guess, from 1990s or 1980s. And I did manage to reconstruct some parts of it, and so I'm interested. Uh, and this is this is a question to Michael: How how did you get into all this? I mean, so what's what was your experience in uh, becoming familiar with Boxer? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, at some point, 
I I got into it via the Changing Minds book originally because I really liked reading Mindstorms at some point and Changing Minds is sort of in the same space. So I read that and then I read the Boxer paper. So I really, the the, the reconstructable computational medium one, which is a nice short paper. Like if you haven't read it, read it definitely it's a, it's a great paper to read. Um, and so I kind of understood the concepts of it and then I tried to find a box where I could run and uh, this one I managed to get to run and it had, you know, it has a tutorial uh, sort of uh, user interface survival tutorial that uh, is sort of enough to barely get you started. Um, if I go in here, uh, you know, it tells you how to sort of expand and collapse things and um, how to execute lines of code by, by double clicking them and all that kind of stuff. So I just worked through this this tutorial, uh, and that was that was enough to get me sort of poking around the system. And then, yeah, then I just um, looked at some of the demos and and had the idea from the paper about you know you know this is meant to be a reconstructable medium. I should be able to sort of mix up some of these things. Um, just tried it, so uh, you can you can learn a lot about. The demo program. I mean, I, I think I think their their idea of um, their idea of every every component being very possible to dive into is sort of very true. And you know, I think if you if you go in and poke around in the implementations of of various components, that's probably the best way to sort of actually actually learn more. Um, just you know, go and open up the closet of things, and you can sort of see see the code and poke through the code, look at uh, progressively larger examples to see how they work. I think would be the way that I would proceed to try and learn more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's not nothing like a secret boxer society, like a fight club. There might be. I'm just not in it. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I went and found the right people at MIT, you know, maybe there is. What are, do you think there could be a data flow version of Boxer? Or can you think of Boxer as being data flow? Uh, data flow. Yeah. Like, wh you know, what do you like, mean by data flow? You know, where you, you, can, you can follow the flow. Everything's based on the flow of information through a system. And often you think of this as like stream-based systems. Sometimes it's used for HPC and stuff like that. But there, there's like a paradigm of programming that's data flow. It has certain operations on it. This feels a little data flow-ish like me. You know, usually data flow, I think, more functional. Um, yeah. Like but, Boxer uh, is, to me, it feels very, feels very state machine-y, right? Because mm -hmm. like... I don't know. I didn't show a, you know, the most, I didn't show very many sort of algorithmic things. Right. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, you, you do do it by mutating the values inside data boxes. Right. It's. So uh, sort, sorting, do you sort, sort a box instead of sorting a list or, you know, well, what, I mean, what's the main data type? Is it, is lists box? are boxes, right? So lists are boxes. Okay. To, to sort a list, you would make a, a box that had a bunch of nested boxes that had the values. Okay. And you would have to, you would have to sort with that. Yeah. You have a linked box list. <laughs> you, you could do that with ports. <laughs> okay. Box a pen, box map. Yep. 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 Since you said data flow, I'm not going to try and provide a demo of it, but I will just call out that there's a very cool system called um, Unit Land, or I think it's just called Unit, but its its website is unit dot dot land, uh, and it is a data flow system, and it reminds me uh, a lot of Boxer um, okay. in, in many ways. It has the same sort of uh, hierarchical components and sort of navigation, uh, but it's it's all data flow graphs uh, and composing data flow graphs. Maybe we can do another video where I, where I demo unit land, but okay, that'd be cool. the unit land guy is, you know, is uh, is actively working. So maybe you should uh, instead host the actual unit land guy well, and get a demo from him. And send out an invite to the unit land developer. And... Yeah.
Um, unit land is another one of those systems that I find it's like boxer. It's like you have to learn the UI to even be able to like navigate and explore an example I, to see why it's I cool. I can tell already. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that hard. It took me about two hours to learn the UI enough to be able okay. to do something fun with it. But um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that looks interesting. Uh, there's also unit dot tools and unit.software are are other domains related to this and uh, unit.md points to the github so for some reason with, when with every tld the, you can imagine <laughs> the unit land uh, landing page looks like a, bas a, a sky view of a basketball court or something i don't oh yeah yeah a little bit yeah, yeah. all right and, well interesting well, there's your web-based version, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, yeah. Uh, if you like data flow graphs, it's uh, definitely cool. an approach. All right. Well, thank you, Michael. This was fun. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Alrighty, I'll press stop. Okay.